This has completely and totally changed the subject. And now we're back playing on Trump's turf again. The two anti-establishment candidates have aligned to form a challenge to the uni party problem. You might say, what? Donald Trump, he is the epitome of the problem. Or you might say, RFK, that wacko crackpot. And that probably means you've consumed too much legacy media or astroturf YouTubers who parrot the points of the establishment, telling you gleefully that Kamala Harris's speech means that Middle Eastern problems will be resolved, war will be ended, equality achieved by all. But we know propaganda when we see it, and we were looking at it live during the DNC. Let me know in the chat. If you join Neil Oliver and I for our live watch along. But the news cycle moves fast these days. And from the moment that RFK stepped out onto the stage in Arizona, the Democrats had a new problem. You know what our position is here on this show. We believe that the greatest threat to your freedom is the sets of institutions represented broadly by, for example, the Democrat Party or the Labour Party in this country or Macron or Trudeau in Canada, globalism, sets of bureaucrats that want to usher us into technological dictatorship. Trump is clearly pretty far from perfect by many of your assessments, although I know there's a lot of MAGA people out there and I welcome all of you because now what we are focused on is the creation of an anti-establishment alliance. How can you argue that anything other than a Trump Kennedy presidency will lead to further dictatorship, further technological feudalism. This is an opportunity for mass disruption. Remember, Kennedy is the man that wrote the book, The Real Anthony Fauci. Do you remember that when it was in the New York Times bestseller list? No, you don't, do you? Because the New York Times wouldn't publish the figures when that was the best-selling book. Why? Because if you read The Real Anthony Fauci, you will see with incredible receipts, with incredible Incredible diligence, the participation of Fauci in particular, and the sets of agencies that he represents in a variety of catastrophic events, most notably and obviously the COVID pandemic, but furthermore, events that took place into the in the 80s with regards to HIV and the subsequent AIDS, not pandemic, but crisis, certainly crisis. So this is an important moment politically. You can see how the legacy media are grinding, hustling, working incredibly hard to ensure that your focus remains on the hot button topics where they know they can galvanize their audience. Talking about little but pro-life issues or the hair's breadth social and cultural issues that they know that they can galvanize and attract using. But this is an important moment. This is a moment for us to challenge legacy media, institutional power, globalist corruption, which all loosely these days, it seems, corrals and coalesces around politicians that still somehow maintain the hue of leftism. But leftism these days just means state power versus the people. Using the idea that they're going to protect us and look after us and provide us with convenient little consumer cultures to protect us from what? To protect us from whom? Let's get into these stories straight away and let's talk about how important it is that we take the opportunity, or you do because I'm not an American, you take the opportunity to disrupt the bandwagon of corporate globalist power that had its great jamboree at the DNC only to wake up to find that the world had already changed with RFK joining Trump. Let's get into it. He is a great person. I've known him for so long. For the past 16 months, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I love a bit of fanfare and I love a firework, but one of the things you'll be aware of if you've been watching the DNC is the lack of significant address of real policy issues. The inclusion of RFK means three significant things. Free speech. 
What happened to the principles of John Milton, once cherished by the left, that censorship is a problem? You know that the party that wants to censor you are the Democratic Party. You know in our country, the UK, it's the Labour Party that crave censorship, that crave the control of information. Because if you can control information, you can control reality. One thing we're all aware of in this campaign is the escalating hysteria means that we have little idea of what the actual policies are. You may have some vague idea that Kamala mentioned price gouging, then stepped away from a bit. You may remember from her speech some bombast about Joe Biden being involved in augmenting peace between the people of Israel and the residents of Gaza, which seems pretty implausible to me. What we have here is an opportunity to focus on some actual policy declarations. One, free speech. Two, health, in particular the health of children, and three, an end to the Ukraine-Russia war. These are actual important ideas. Remember, if you're British, Keir Starmer, day one of his premiership, straight over to Ukraine to assure Zelensky that funding will continue. Remember, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians, hundreds of thousands of Russians have lost their lives. Why and for what? You are funding this desperate debacle of death and destruction. Why should we continue to? Well, because you've got no choice. If you vote for Rishi Sunak, the war continues. If you vote for Kirstama, the war continues. If you, if you vote for Kamala Harris, the war continues. But here, you have an opportunity to end war. So this is in in a sense, an invitation to people that consider themselves liberals or people that consider themselves members of the left or people that consider themselves the children of the civil rights era, that consider themselves to be members of some kind of counterculture. Do you believe in free speech? Do you believe in ending war? Do you believe in health and challenging big pharma and big food? Well, finally, you have an opportunity to vote for someone. Now, I can see in the comments, what about Israel? What about Palestine? What about, what about, what about? Well, what about the certain that continuing to vote for the centrist, globalist, bureaucrat, managerial, Huxley-esque, Kafka, occupying, bureaucrat, bang you up for nothing and condemn you on the basis of mere murmurs has to be confronted at some point. And maybe today is that day. We can't continue to bring this content without the help of our partners. Would you like to go to a university that supports your faith? You can go to one. Indeed, if you're a Christian, Grand Canyon University is for you. Here's their message. Grand Canyon University, a private Christian university in Phoenix, believe that we are endowed by our creator to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness from the Constitution. A Christian university, eh? GCU believe in equal opportunities and equip everyone to serve others in ways that promote human flourishing, creating, as they believe, a ripple effect of transformation. Whether your pursuit involves a bachelor's, a master's or a doctoral degree, GCU's online and on-campus learning environments are designed to help you achieve your unique goals. Why don't you learn a bit more? With over 340 academic programs as of March 2020, 24, GCU provide you with a path to fulfill your dreams. The pursuit to serve others is yours. Let it flourish. Wow. It's a pretty profound goal, isn't it? Because everything we do is about self and this is about service. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable education. Visit gcu.edu forward slash Russell. That's visit gcu.edu forward slash Russell. Two S's, two L's. Give it a try. Thanks. Let's have a look at the impact that RFK's alliance with Trump is already having on the election. Well, I think there's a tremendous upside. I think it's tangible and substantial. Tony Fabrizio, who is a pollster that I've known and worked with for a long time, is the lead pollster uh, for the internal Trump polls, released a memo today going through the seven battleground states that a lot of people have focused on, talking about North Carolina and Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona and Georgia. And in every single one of those seven battleground states, all of these RFK voters, RFK junior voters, break towards Trump. Some of them, Trump is getting two thirds of the of the RFK voters, and he's getting about four percent, three percent in these states. And in a state like Pennsylvania, where it could well come down to you know tens of thousands of votes, a half a point or three quarters of a point, that may well make the difference in who the next president is. A lot of people have said that Pennsylvania is going to be the key for Kamala Harris. Democrats cannot win the presidency without Pennsylvania. That is the conventional wisdom. If RFK Jr. makes the difference in other states and Pennsylvania, 
it really could spell the difference in this campaign. This should be taken seriously. This is a big day in the campaign. And let me tell you, Kamala Harris did not want this to happen on the first day after her convention. She wanted to come out of there riding high. This has completely and totally changed the subject. And now we're back playing on Trump's turf again. They say, of course, that the Democrats can't win the election without winning Pennsylvania. That's an adage as consistent as the left look for traitors and the right look for converts. Whatever the new politics is that's about to emerge, and I will remain sceptical about the ability of state institutions that have strong ties to corporations, particularly global ones, that hasn't made a clear commitment to end the deep state, being able to deliver the kind of change that we want to experience. The fact is now there is an anti-establishment alliance. We will see the media working particularly hard now to continue to simultaneously condemn Trump using the tropes that you will recognize, areas in which he's perhaps not done himself any favors with some of his clumsy language and indeed some of his policies. I, again, don't really care what your perspective is. I mean, I care about what your perspective is, but I'm not trying to change your perspective. What I'm saying is, is the inclusion of RFK now means that this is a deliberate and demonstrable anti-establishment alliance and the establishment will have to work double, double hard to simultaneously convey Trump as a misogynist and a hateful figure and inept and old now that he's not against Biden. And now they're going to have to focus, I suppose, on Bobby Kennedy being a, a crackpot and a wacko. Whereas, of course, if he was their man, if he had joined the Democrats, if he had formed an alliance with them, he would be an environmental lawyer. He would be a Kennedy. He would be an advocate for free speech. What this gives us an opportunity to do is for perhaps, for perhaps the first time in this campaign to focus on issues. Do you want Big Pharma to be challenged? Do you want big food to be challenged? Do you want your children and your family to be healthy? I urge you, if you've not read it already, to look at the book, The Real Anthony Fauci, and see why the Democratic Party might hate the person that wrote that book, a person that's willing to go out on a limb and outright condemn the various federal and, and non-federal agencies that prop up the pharmaceutical industry. The legacy media are already working incredibly hard to condemn and damn Bobby Kennedy. You know how the legacy media works. If the legacy media hates them, they must be doing something right. You know that my own personal journey towards being somewhat more open to the idea of Trump, who I, like everybody else from my kind of background, was willing to condemn when he came down the old golden escalator in 2015. You know that I became more open to the idea that Trump was a wrecking ball to the establishment simply because he was condemned so very vociferously, so vehemently, and so consistently. Now, let's have a look at the legacy media repoing themselves to say, well, uh, Trump is bad because he said these things, and Bobby Kennedy is bad because he said these things, and Kamala Harris is good because she doesn't say anything at all, unless it's scripted down to the last syllable. Do you think it's right that a presidential candidate can only appear in the best light with every single word penned and examined before you're allowed to hear it, while free speech is under threat, while your children's health is under threat while perpetual wars are being offered to you as almost unconscious policies. Let's have a look at the legacy media going to work against Bobby Kennedy. If you've never heard of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. in the context of this current political moment and all that is broken and bad about it, first of all, lucky you. Sorry to ruin that. We'll start with a quick word on who he is and crucially who he is not. RFK Jr. is, as you likely surmise, the son of Robert F. Kennedy, the highly regarded brother of President John F. Kennedy. RFK Jr. is not a scientist. He is not a doctor, although that has not stopped him from spreading lie after lie after lie on topics of public health and vaccine safety. It'll be fantastic to break down what is considered lie after lie after lie. Our locals member will already be watching our interview with Jay Bhattacharya, one of the authors of the Great Barrington Declaration that came out significantly earlier than you might have heard of some of these ideas in the pandemic period, where he said... We should consider the importance of natural immunity. We should consider the importance of shielding the elderly, perhaps as a priority above generalized lockdowns. We should consider the impact on children might not be significant. We should consider the fact that, generally speaking, it isn't wise to f 
during an epidemic and we should be very clear about whether or not these medications, if indeed that's what they are, have been trialled for anti-transmission efficacy. All of these things were 100% true and at the time were considered 100% false and lies and were censored at the time. Of course, we understand that when someone is vilified by the establishment, it's because they challenge establishment interest. Look at how quickly MSNBC, which stands for, as you know, Microsoft NBC, which means that even if it doesn't still have economic and financial ties to Bill Gates, it's very much part of the globalist Bill Gates purview, which of course means that it's connected to the WHO. I don't mean in a literal uh, financial sense, but as a general ideology. We clearly now have an opportunity to challenge this fragile sphere of globalist power that immediately engineers realities that are detrimental to the advance of our cause, whether that means condemning Bobby Kennedy or condemning any other vocal opponent of the establishment. Why? Also that the pharmaceutical interests that they continually frame, showcase and give platforms to can continue to succeed unabetted. That's but one reason that the establishment walks together in lockstep against your free speech and your freedom more generally. RFK Jr. is, however, an overwhelming source of misinformation and disinformation, a purveyor of vile conspiracy theories and fake science. He's linked chemicals in our water supply to gender dysphoria. That one example there, like he's linked to water supply to gender dysphoria. I bet what that is, that is that birth control pills leave estrogen traces in the water and that has been clinically proven to affect testosterone levels. That's something that even I, also a non-scientist, has just peripherally picked up as being absolutely true. Note here that that is presented to you in the most incendiary and condemnatory language. He's a hysteric, he's a lunatic, he's a maniac, but it's becoming increasingly difficult for them to avoid the very same charge that they're offering. Because if you are an absolute propagandist, you you have to continue to amplify your message. And they've got 70 odd days of this now. How are they going to continue to maintain the veneer and sheen that they've managed to temporarily place on Kamala Harris and continue to condemn, in the case of Bobby Kennedy, a man who is, in I would say in many regards, a hero. Sure, he's idiosyncratic. He's got an unusual voice. He's into falconry and stuff. Look at how, look, look at how you'll get Stephen Colbert come out and just say he's a weirdo. Well, hold on a minute. Are we allowed to be... Well, let's talk about the issue of gender identity and LGBTQ plus issues. Are we allowed to be weird? Are we, what, are we trying to do? what are we trying to create? Uh, a heterodoxy? Absolute hegemony? Is it okay to be weird or is it not okay to be weird? Is it good to be a billionaire or is it bad to be a billionaire? Can you have Bernie Sanders come out and say, oh, billionaires, billionaires of both parties have got to be condemned before a billionaire comes out. He's called something like Jeff Pritzker. I can't remember memorize all these people's names, but it's a name that if I did need to check on it, there's a certain little black book from old Swingy from a rope in prison somehow, Mr. Island and Plain, that might have that name in it. Are billionaires good or are billionaires bad? Depends on whether or not that billionaire will carry the message of the state or not, the global corporatist state. Are tech billionaires bad and tech platforms bad? Same metric is used, same measurements used continually. Antidepressants to school shootings and insisted COVID vaccines were a tool to control people Seriously, he's that guy. RFK Jr. is not a person who can claim the high ground on the topic of race, having just recently suggested COVID-19 might have been genetically engineered to target, quote, Caucasians and black people, end quote, and to spare Jewish and Chinese people. RFK Jr. is someone who has recently been rebuked by some of his own very famous and highly regarded family members. So it doesn't matter that he's a Kennedy, but it does matter that they're Kennedys. There's good Kennedys and bad Kennedys. There's good billionaires and bad billionaires. Do you see? Do you see how it works? The, the, what we're in is a situation where the nepotism of Trump is bad, but the nepotism of Biden is fine. Where the corruption of Trump is bad, but the corruption of the Biden family is fine. Where one Kennedy is good and another Kennedy is bad. So that you know, we can have a position here 
We have to look at it this way. There is an attempt to centralize power across the globe using crisis generally to legitimize measures of authority that would otherwise be rejected. Figures like Trump, I believe, are somewhat almost unconsciously opposed to this because they're kind of libertarian individualists. And figures like Bobby Kennedy are old school civil rights ethical, left-wing, actually, politicians who are against establishment power. And as he says himself, you don't need me to speak for him. Free speech, children's health, ending the war in Ukraine. There are some policies. Now, listen to what Kamala Harris said in her speech. Oh, I had a person stay around my house once, and that's given me some principles. My mum made this type of dinner. Like, those things, you can't build governments around that. You can't build power around that. And finally, and perhaps most alarming of all, RFK Jr. is a candidate for president. On the Democratic side, he is second behind President Biden, having polled as high as 20%. For all those reasons, you can see why today Republicans handed him a bullhorn. RFK Jr. was on Capitol Hill testifying in front of the GOP-led and ironically named Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government on the topic of censorship and free speech. Go figure. Here's how he responded to Delegate Stacey Plaskett. I've never been anti-vaccine, but everybody in this room probably believes that I have been because that's the prevailing narrative. Anti-Semitism, racism, these are, are the most appalling, disgusting pejoratives. And they're applied to me to silence me. And by the way, I want to say this while I'm on the record, that in my entire life and why I'm under oath, in my entire life, I have never uttered a phrase that was either racist or anti-Semitic. Um, again, he's been rebuked in the last 72 hours by many members of his very famous family. Uh, Delegate Plaskett, you start. Um, what was the purpose? We'll deal with the substance of what was um, conveyed, but what was the purpose we, today of having... Must we deal with the substance? <laughs> we don't have to. <laughs> no. Uh, there is no substance, unlike Kamala's fantastic speech that was full of substance. Did you see the bit where she said, let's get down to business, and then for nearly an hour said thank you to her husband and that tubby VP guy? That's substance. There's substance. Did you not know that Taylor Swift was this close to coming, that Beyonce was nearly there? That's substance. We've got some substance. The substance of it is the maintenance of sex centralized power. These are not the inheritors of the mantle of civil rights. These are the enemy of your personal freedom. These are the enemy of real liberty. This is an opportunity for us to finally oppose the disgusting corruption that has been prevalent and evident since when? I don't know. Did it begin with Clinton Bush? Did it begin in the Obama era? When did it become, for, when did it fully fulminate? When did it come into its apotheosis? I don't know. But I do know that now it needs to be significantly and radical, radically disrupted. And this is an opportunity for that. Hey, this is exciting. We've got a great partner today. It's Rumble. But beyond Rumble, it's Rumble's latest venture. Let me ask you first, are you a Sleepy Joe type character with zero cognitive performance, struggling to muster focus and brain power for basic things like running the United States of America? You've got to stop drinking woke liberal coffee that hates you and your way of life and start your day by drinking Rumble's very own 1775 coffee. This is going to be the best tasting coffee you've ever had. Seriously good, ethically sourced, from a family farm in the high altitude mountains of Bolivia. Not in the Bolivian lowlands run not by a family, but by a single man still living with a pet. No! Instead of waking up and drinking your big corporation-owned woke ideology coffee that's probably making you sick from the pesticides it's sprayed with, try Rumble's 1775 Revolutionary Coffee. Support freedom of speech. Build a parallel economy that actually values you and loves you. My favorite? It's dark, of course. Level up your morning routine with a 1775 coffee. Sleep all night knowing your hard-earned dollary dues are going towards supporting freedom-loving creators like me on Rumble. Visit 1775coffee.com now, pick up your first bag, use the code BRAND to save 10% on your first order. Oh, come on. Why choose, you know?
Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.